Hello guys, Lifehackster here. Today we will review and check out the Rove R2 4K Pro dash cam. I did review the older R2 4K about three years ago and I will link it down below if you want to check it out. And I'll tell you the differences between the two throughout the video, so keep on watching. By the way, this R2 4K Pro is just a one channel dash cam. And what I like about this is that it has a suction mount. So this dash cam is perfect for a Renault or anyone that doesn't own the vehicle that they are driving, but wants some security of a dash cam just in case. I'm also going to show you how you can easily install this and power this up without needing to route any power cabling to your headboard, a pillar, and dashboard using an adapter. And you can easily install this in a couple of minutes. Also, thank you, Robe, for sending me this dash cam to be reviewed. And I'll tell you one difference and one thing that I complained about their original R2 4K is that it wasn't recording in UHD 4K quality, which I think they're still advertising it as such because its pixel resolution is only 2880 by 2160, and that is not 4K. But this Pro version is. It records in 3840 by 2160 pixel resolution up to 30 frames per second. It has a 150 degree diagonal field of view and has a 1.5 aperture, which is better than the 1.8 on the older version. And now this Pro has 5 GHz Wi-Fi. Now this is not internet Wi-Fi, this doesn't connect to the internet, but you can access the dash cam with your phone using the Rove app. It connects wirelessly using the dash cam's Wi-Fi like if you want to view the recorded footage or download the footage to your phone. It has other features like the older version and other dash cams in the market like built-in GPS, G-sensor, parking mode if you connect this with Rove's hardware kit. This Pro version now uses a super capacitor instead of a battery like in the older version. So this can withstand higher heat and overall longer product life. This uses the Novatec 96670 chipset and Sony Starvis IMX335 Starlight sensor, just like other dash cams, and uses both H.265 and 264 compression. As to storage, you can use up to a 512GB microSD card, class 10, U3 speed. Rove has its own microSD card for this dash cam if you want. Now this Pro version has USB Type-C power and data port instead of the mini USB on the older version. Inside the box, you will get a user manual, some more paperwork, we have the accessory box, and inside we have the suction mount. We have a car plug USB adapter. We have a 12 foot USB C power cable, and we have a shorter 2.5 feet one. We have a trim push tool. We have a 3M mount if you want a more permanent install. Windshield cleaning wipe, cable clips, and extra mounting tape. We have a clear film to stick the stick on mount into so you don't have to stick it directly to the windshield. And we have two films. And we have the dash cam itself. Design-wise, it looks the same as the older version. It has a 2.4-inch IPS display. We have the menu, up, emergency lock, down, and confirm buttons. On one side, we have the USB Type-C port, and on the other side, we have the micro SD card slot and a power button, which is not really necessary because this dash cam automatically turns on and starts to record when you plug it in for power or when you start your car. On top, we have the GPS module and we have a TV out port. On the front, we have the camera lens recording in 4K and on the bottom, we have the reset button and the mic. Let's put in the micro SD card and I'll be using Rove's own and this one has a 128 gigabyte capacity. Time to install this, but before that, I'll show you an adapter. Actually, a rear view mirror adapter that you can use to power this dash cam without needing to route its power cable. This is from Dongar Technologies and specific to the car that you drive. And I got one for the F-150 that I'm going to install this dash cam to. What you will get is the wire harness and this male plug goes to the back of your rear view mirror. And the female part is where you insert your car's wiring. And there is the USB port that you can plug in a short USB-C cable to power up your dash cam. And this wire kit comes with a short mini USB, micro USB, and the one that we are going to use, USB Type-C plug, which I'm already going to plug in. Time to install this, and I'll use the suction mount. Make sure the windshield is clean, slide the dash cam to the mount, put the mount on the glass, preferably behind the rear view mirror, and turn the knob clockwise to lock it in place. And you can adjust the position of the dash cam and tighten the smaller knob to keep its position. To remove, turn it counterclockwise and pull the little tab on the rubber suction cup and everything will come off. As to the adapter, unplug the wire harness from your rear view mirror and plug it into the Dongar adapter. And plug in the adapter to your rear view mirror. And plug the USB-C plug to the dash cam and that's it. 
All right, let's power up the truck and see if this works. Oh yeah, it's powering it up. Easiest dash cam install that I've done. And you can do a little bit of wire management, but as long as it's behind your rear view mirror, it is not going to be a distraction. Let's check the settings and let's start on the dash cam itself. You really don't need the Rove app because this one has a screen so all the settings can be changed using the dash cam itself. Clicking the menu will stop the recording and get you to the settings. We have the video resolution and I'll be recording on the highest 3840 by 2160 at 30 FPS. But you can set it to 2560 by 1440 at 60 or 2K 30 FPS, 1080p at 60 and 1080p at 30. Loop recording, you can set how long the camera records. It can record in one minute increments. It still records continuously, but it breaks it up in one minute recordings. There is every four gigabyte file every three, five, or 10 minutes. This just makes it easy to find and download the footage that you want and not download the whole SD card worth of data. We have the G sensor sensitivity and all these other settings that you can set. On the cogwheel icon, you can set the dash cam's Wi-Fi so that when you use the Rove app, you can connect to it, which I'll show you here in a bit. But here are the other settings that you can set. Okay, for the Rove app, when you open up the app, you do need to sign up to be able to use it, which I really think it is not needed. I know other brands that doesn't need you to sign up. Turn on the dash cam's Wi-Fi, which is already on. Choose your dash cam and click connect. Go to your phone's Wi-Fi settings and connect to the network that has Rove on it. Type in the password, which is 1 through 8, and click join. Go back to the app, and when it is connected, you will see the live view from the dash cam. I think the only thing that you are going to use this app for is to search and watch the recorded footage and download it to your phone. And as you can see, this is how long it takes to download a 1 minute long footage, and this is connected to 5 GHz network. And as you know, the easier way to do this is just to remove the micro SD card and directly connect it to your computer to view and download the recordings. Still downloading, and it takes about 30 seconds to download a minute long recording. You can also access and change the dash cam settings using the Rove app if you want. Now let's check out the video quality. So this is the uh, video and audio quality of the Rove R2 4K uh, Pro. And this is the video quality that uh, looks like. And we'll see if it can read license plates. This records in uh, 4K at uh, 3840 by 2160. Pixel resolution at 30 frames per second. And this is what the video quality looks like. This is the uh, video quality of the Rove R2 4K Pro at night. And as you can see, we're going into the uh, intersection right here. And you can see if you'll be able to identify a read license plates, like the car in front of me. And this is what it looks like. And we have some uh, ambient lights. All right, so what do you think? Video quality is decent, and to be honest, there's not a lot of difference that I can see compared to the older version, which has the lesser resolution. This will also need a CPL or a circular polarizing filter to minimize windshield glare. Rove sells this separately as an accessory. I'm not really impressed with the nighttime quality either. I see a lot of noise, and you will see the reflection glare is just a bit too much that I cannot read plates of cars just in front of me. It is washed out. I think i just been spoiled by Viofo. They're a bit pricey, but the video quality of the A139 Pro, as you can see when compared with the Rove Pro, and both are recording in 4K, there is a difference. And Rove needs to start upgrading to the Starvis 2 sensor because this is where you'll get the biggest benefit. Not a lot of glare at night. And here's the snapshot of the footage from the Rove 2. You cannot read the plates. And the bank sign is also washed out. 
But here is the snapshot from the Viofo A139 Pro Starvis 2 sensor and you can read the plates and also the bank sign. For the price point though, for a 4K dash cam, Rove is pretty decent. And I like that it has a suction mount so that you can easily mount this and switch this to another car. Or you can bring this when you're traveling like in a plane and you have a rental at the airport. Just place it in a travel case and you can quickly install this in your rental. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.